All right, so this is lesson one of the Linear Relations Unit for Math 8. Um, the whole point of today is to learn how to represent patterns in different ways, specifically today with pictures and equations. And then next lesson, we're going to be doing tables and graphs. Okay, um, so patterns can be re represented in many ways. Examples, they can be represented visually with pictures or diagrams. They can be represented with words. You can describe the pattern. Like, for example, you could say the number of circles is increasing by two or something like that. Um, you can use equations, tables, graphs. We see patterns everywhere around us. I mean, I mean it's kind of the whole point of math is, is to analyze patterns. And so it's important to be able to represent them in different ways because by representing them in different ways, we can understand more about the patterns. Okay, so we're going to be looking at some simple visual patterns today and then learning how we can kind of visually see how they're growing in order to write an equation from those patterns. Okay, so let's look at the first pattern. I encourage you to take a second, pause the video, and then try and draw step four and see what's happening here. Um, but I'll go ahead and do that now. So I can see that every time, the way that I sort of see this pattern is we're starting with this square of four and then we're adding on this little, this three every time. So we're gonna add on one more three here, one more group of three, I mean. So step four would look sort of like this. Um, okay, so let's try and use visuals to see how we're adding things on in each step. So I just showed one way to think about it. You can think of this as we're starting with a square that is always there. Okay, and then after step two, we start adding on these groups of three. Okay. Another way to see the pattern is we always have this sort of this one circle here in the corner. So we always have one and then we're adding on these groups of three depending on how many steps we're at. So at two steps we'd have two groups of three, at three steps we'd have three groups of three and so on. So um, if n is the number of steps we're going to have three a group n groups of three. Um, n is the number of steps. So you always have the one in the corner and then three times have whatever step number you're at. That's one way to see the pattern. Um, another way to see the pattern, oftentimes there's like multiple ways. I encourage you to maybe even come up with your own right now that's different from the two I've already shown you. Um, but another way that I see it is you can think of it like you've got these two, this group of two here, and then you have this diagonal here. Um, and then here the diagonal increases by one every single time. And you end up with like just, just different numbers of groups of two. So the number of groups of two is whatever step number you're at. So it's like the first step, I have two yellow groups of two, and the second step I have, sorry, one yellow group of two, and step two I have two groups of two, and step three I have three groups of two, and so on. So in yellow here, I have two times n, two times whatever step number I'm at. And then in pink is basically, so plus n plus one whatever step number I'm at plus one. So in step one, it was two circles. In step two, it was three circles. Step three, it was four circles and so on. So that's another way to see the pattern. Um, so we've come up with an equation now that basically represents this pattern. And the advantage of an equation is you can use it to calculate how many circles would be like, for example, in the 43rd step or the 107th step. Steps that would be way too inconvenient to draw by hand, but now we can use the equation to figure out how many circles there are. So let's use our equation um, for the, the first equation we came up with. Um, we're gonna call it C equals one plus three N. C is just like the count, how many objects there are, and N is the step number. So if I wanna figure out how many circles there are in the 43rd step, I would just replace N with 43. So there'd be the one in the corner plus 43 groups of three and 
that is 130. So there's 130 circles in the 43rd step. I can get that with my equation without having to draw the whole thing out. I could have used the other equation I came up with as well. 2n plus n plus 1 is actually equivalent to the first equation, but let's use that one and see that it's also 130. So I'd have 43 groups of 2 plus 43 plus 1 um, circles in pink. And that also gives us 130. Okay, so there's 130 circles in each step. So you can come up with different equations. Um, oftentimes there's more than one that are equivalent that represent the pattern. Um, and then you can use those equations to come up with how many circles in, in next steps. What is the advantage of using visuals to represent the patterns? They can help us to understand the pattern. What is the advantage of using an equation to represent the pattern is the equation is more difficult to come up with but once you have it you can use it to find information about larger step numbers that would be way too hard to draw. Okay, great. So we're gonna do this two more times and again, feel free to pause any time and, and make your own visuals and, and see how they compare to mine. Okay, so here we have an, uh, another pattern here. It's growing, there's some triangles involved. So first thing we're gonna do is, is draw step four and then we're gonna try and use visuals to see how this pattern is growing. So step four is looking like, I'm gonna have, looks like these groups of two are growing. So I'm going to have four groups of two and then I'm going to have three triangles on top instead of two. Okay, so the way that I see this pattern growing is essentially we have these groups of two, which how many groups there are depends on the step size. Okay, and you could color this down here if you want meant to do this down here. So I have one group of two, two groups of two, three groups of two for step three. So that would be 2n plus I then have an extra one being added on every time after step two. So the number of extra triangles is one minus the step number. So it'd be n minus one. So for example in step three I only have two triangles. In step four I had three, etc. So there's my equation and we're going to use this equation C equals 2n plus n minus 1 to figure out how many are in the 43rd step. Okay, I'm just going to highlight the different parts. So in the 43rd step, there would be 43 groups of 2. Those would be the triangles that we're highlighting in yellow. Plus 43 minus 1. There would be 42 triangles highlighted in pink on top. So in total, that would give us 128 triangles in the 43rd step. So again, the advantage of the equation is you can figure out information about larger step sizes that would be way too inconvenient to draw. But the advantage of the drawing is you can understand how the pattern is growing visually. Okay, last one. Maybe try this one yourself. This is the hardest pattern we're doing today because it involves rectangles, which is a little bit different. The growing, the way it's growing is a bit different. Okay, so step four, um, is going to look something like, so we're going to have four of these layers. Um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. I didn't draw that great, but that's okay. And then one on top here and one on the bottom. Okay, let's see how many objects are being added each time. The way that I visualize this is that we always consistently have this, these squares on the top and the bottom. So there's always an extra two squares. And then we have this like rectangle that changes size. And the rectangle size, so the height of the rectangle is whatever the step size is. So in the first step it's one, in the second step it's two, in the third step it's three. So this is always n. 
the step number. And then the width of this rectangle is always n plus 2, 2 larger than the step size. So here it's 4, for example, in step 2, and then on step 1 it's 3. It's always 2 larger than the step size. So we have this rectangle, and then the area or the number of squares in that rectangle would be length times width, so n times n plus 2. So there's our equation. Our equation is 2, which are the ones in yellow, plus n times n plus 2. That's how many are in the rectangle that I've highlighted in blue. So if we want to know how many are going to be in the 43rd step, and 43, by the way, is just a random number. I'm just picking that for an example. But you could figure out how many squares were in any step. So we're going to plug in 43. So it's 2 plus 43 times 45. So the blue rectangle would be 43 tall and 45 squares wide. And then you'd have the extra 2 on top. So that would be 1,937. Again, way too big of a number to actually draw out by hand, but the equation gives us the ability to figure that out. And that is the end of the lesson.